Hi all, AC Dot here again, and uh, here's a video to follow up on the one I did about coils. This time it's electronic ignition. Okay, so I do get asked uh, from time to time about, uh, you know, what, what do I feel is the best uh, electronic ignition or the best uh, distributors to be using in engines. So to make it simple, I've narrowed it down to uh, two, okay? Uh, and I've got the uh, original Lucas uh, unit, 65 DM4, um, and also for engines that are the A series and not the A plus type, the PowerSpark 45D electronic unit. Um, now there's a couple of reasons why I've narrowed it down here, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll take some time to go through that so you understand where I'm coming from. So the Lucas 65D, so this is an original one which I've uh, cleaned up and recurved for uh, Thomas Classic and Modern. Uh, I'm just using it here as an, uh, a good example of one. Uh, the reason why I like this unit is A, it's factory reliable, uh, and B, it's the uh, variable dwell design. And what I mean by that is, um, if you can imagine a points dizzy, the dwell angle is the time at which the points are closed, um, which is obviously the time the coil's charging. Now, on a points ignition, um, that's fixed uh, to do with the spacing of the points. On these type of ignitions, that actual um, facet of what we call dwell angle is actually variable. And the good thing about a variable dwell angle is we can run high power coils and use no ballast resistor and we can maintain the spark energy uh, as the revs rise uh, by increasing the uh, effective coil on time or increasing the dwell angle in line with the RPM increase. Now, if you know anything about distributors, you'll know that as you uh, uh, as the revs rise, there's less time to charge a coil. So if you've got an ignition system like a points distributor that uh, uh, has a fixed uh, timing, uh, at idle, you obviously have quite a high power going to the coil, but at high speed, so at 6,000 revs, you have much less power. Well, these, these units, uh, as do a, a lot of more modern um, uh, electronic ignition systems, uh, have a system by where they vary the dwell angle, and what that means is at low revs, when you don't need the power, uh, it has a much smaller or much uh, quicker uh, coil on time. And then as the revs rise, uh, the dwell angle is, the, is increased to increase the coil charging time uh, to counteract the um, re reduction in time between sparks as the, the engine runs quicker. So what that basically means is uh, on this system, you can run a 0.8 ohm coil with no ballast resistor and you can run 35 foul plug gaps and this will run uh, certainly in my use uh, nice and clean all the way up to 8000 rpm it'll probably run faster than 8000 rpm but uh, that's what i've tested them to uh, and this is the preferred dizzy that i use in in, in every a plus application um, obviously the only drawback to this type of dizzy the factory dizzy is the fact that uh, it has a mechanical advanced mechanism in the bottom and a, 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 and a traditional vacuum unit. So uh, if you want to keep things traditional uh, and um, sensible and reliable, using one of these is a very, very good option. Next up on the list is the 45D unit from PowerSpark. So I like these units uh, because they're budget, so they're um, very good price. Uh, they also uh, are obviously completely new, so there's no you know reconditioning or anything needed. Uh, this is a 45D, as I said, and it's suitable for the A series engines. Um, but the real boon about these from PowerSpark is uh, with that module, the wide black one there, you can actually uh, run low ohm coils. Now this module comes in two power ratings. Now this is the low power one, so this will fire a uh, 1.4 to 3 ohm coil um, and you can get the high energy version which is a direct bolt-in upgrade which will then fire a 0.8 ohm coil so my advice to you is when you buy one of these uh, buy the high energy one and then you can run the same 0.8 um, ohm coil as you can with this unit so effectively gone are the days where if you had an A plus engine uh, you could have high power ignition. Nowadays, you can run this and have exactly the same variable dwell type dizzy uh, with the same 35 thou plug gaps, uh, 
fired by a 0.8 ohm coil. So these power spark units have variable dwell output, which is fantastic. Uh, and it makes a, a great upgrade for um, an older A series engine. Now, what you have to remember with these is, of course, again, it's the same as with the 65D. In the bottom there, there's mechanical advance uh, system. So it's uh, springs and weights, and obviously uh, a good old vacuum unit for um, doing your uh, part throttle um, uh, advance and retard as you would normally have. So uh, these units, I would recommend when you buy them uh, to have them curved to suit your application because the advance curve is not always ideal for, for as they come supplied. Uh, even when they say it's for a, uh, I think they advertise them for 1275s, uh, you can get an improvement by having them curved. So you have to remember is uh, these are these are an excellent unit for the price, but the way they make them, they can't tailor everything to every single engine. So uh, just because it says it's right, doesn't mean to say it's actually spot on. So uh, highly recommend to buy these power spark dizzies. Uh, again, with the high energy module, this is the low energy one, but buy the high energy version. Uh, and then you can run the big spark plugs, uh, run the appropriate advance curve, and they're so cheap that when they wear out, uh, you simply throw it and buy another one. So while we're talking about this unit, let's talk about um, ignition coils. As I've already mentioned, 0.8 ohm is what I recommend with the high power one. Um, if you've got the low power dizzy, uh, this is still a variable dwell unit. So I actually recommend running a, a straight 1.5 ohm coil uh, with the low power version uh, using 25 power plug gaps um, and no ballast resistor. Now, the problem with these dizzies is if you use them with the three ohm coil. And the reason for it is, is if you use a three ohm coil, these, uh, I think the dwell angle runs from about 22 to 45 degrees. So actually at full power, you're only got 45 degrees of dwell um, charge time, which is effectively then running a three ohm coil. So you're actually undercharging a three ohm coil uh, at high revs, which is not the best situation to be in. So. My advice to you is to, uh, if you use one of these, use it with a 1.5 ohm uh, coil, uh, 25 hour plug gaps um, with no ballast resistor. Uh, that's if you're using the low power module. Using the high power module, change that 1.5 ohm coil for a 0.8 ohm coil, uh, open the plug gaps up to 35 hour and get the full benefit of high power ignition. So when it comes down to advanced curves, uh, all distributors uh, on all different types over the years uh, are all basically the same units, but the actual advanced curves are set from the factory uh, originally to um, give the uh, uh, factory the advanced characteristics they want to basically make the engine run as they want. Um, so you can't just fit any dizzy in any engine. If you want to get best performance, you need one that's going to give an advanced curve that's actually going to bring the best performance out of that uh, engine. And uh, one of the uh, downsides, especially of the later factory engines, was that uh, they run a much reduced mechanical advance uh, and they run a lot of part throttle advance. And the, the advantage for doing that was uh, that you could have, at part throttle, you could have the perfect timing to get the maximum economy. And then when you put your foot down, the engine felt quite lazy. So uh, it wasn't sporty. Uh, the engine didn't perform wonderfully well and the driver felt less inspired to keep their foot down. So they would change gear and use the car as an economy car rather than one that would go well when thrashed. Uh, whereas on the other hand, if that engine advance curve was changed, you could change the characteristics of the engine and make it more sporty. And when you put your foot down, you want to keep your foot down because the engine keeps pulling because the advance is correct. So one of the, uh, you know, one of the advantages of doing the advance curve is it makes the engine much more uh, sporty to drive, much more um, uh, throttle response and uh, with the appropriate amount of ignition advance from the centrifugal system, uh, which is the, these parts here, these are the respective parts out of these distributors, uh, you would get uh, great fuel economy and obviously uh, great great performance. So uh, one of the most often un overlooked things on when I see people's cars is uh, they've either fitted a new dizzy with the wrong advance curve or they fitted a, a, a dizzy that has a modified advance curve but it isn't right for their application. So, you know... the if you want performance, guys, you know, 
you need to start looking in this area because there's a lot of performance potential and economy to be had by getting by getting this right so in terms of doing the advanced curve uh th this is not what this video is about actually i'm going to be uh, offering a training course in the not too distant future where people can come down and i'll show them how to recurve distributors um but the the important points to know is uh, the weights are fixed so you can't do anything uh, or change them they don't produce any heavier or lighter ones but there's lots of different springs okay so they're the springs out of the uh, 65d and there are some typical springs out of this power spark uh, unit um the weights on the power spark again are all the same but uh the benefit here is is i i sometimes uh, uh add weight by welding to them and things like that so there are options you, you can be had but the most important thing is uh don't just fit any dizzy and expect the engine to perform because it's it just simply won't of course there are other dizzies on the market uh one of my favorite is the um uh, the 123 ignition especially the 123 tune because uh, you can hook it up to a computer or your uh, I believe you can hook it to your phone and then uh, you can tune the advanced curve so uh, any dizzy from any of the manufacturers CSI Alden any of those uh, that has a programmable option is clearly the best option uh, if you want to get the absolute ultimate in terms of the best advanced curve and the best ignition map and obviously you notice I use the word map there because uh, when you're talking at ignition, you're not just talking, um, you know, full throttle uh, centrifugal advance or base advance. You're actually talking um, a mapped advance, so load sensitive. And that's what the advantage of using a, a map system or a programmable uh, dizzy. So, um, you know, by all means, look at programmable dizzies. This video really was uh, de uh, designed for those people that I go and see typically, which have uh, traditional uh, either points ignition or uh, electronic ignition uh, dizzies with centrifugal, mechanical centrifugal advance and obviously vacuum. Uh, advanced. Okay, that was a quick run through of dizzies from my point of view. As I say, uh, in the future, I'm going to be offering a, a training course uh, for recurving dizzies. So if, uh, uh, if any companies out there want to learn how to do it or any individuals want to learn how to do it, then obviously drop me a line. Uh, not available at the moment, but uh, something for next year. So um, uh, with that in mind, please like and subscribe and obviously share. So thank you very much and I'll see you soon.